Hey everyone, Pastor Tim here from the Church at West Shore. Welcome to our daily devotion and prayer time. This is the Sunday edition, the Lord's Day edition. And uh, we are moving into Leviticus chapter 8 as we continue to look at the instructions that God gave the children of Israel. Today is a special chapter, um, at least the portion that we're reading. Uh, we'll continue it tomorrow, but it's about the ordination of the priest, the, the actual uh, event that took place that called Aaron and his descendants out as the uh, spiritual leaders of the nation of Israel. So God tells us in verse one, then the Lord said to Moses, bring Aaron and his sons along with their sacred garments, the anointing oil, the bull for the sin offering, the two rams and the basket of bread made without yeast and call the entire community of Israel together at the entrance of the tabernacle. So Moses followed the Lord's instructions and the whole community assembled at the tabernacle entrance. Moses announced to them, this is what the Lord has commanded us to do. Then he presented Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. He put the official tunic on Eric, Aaron and tied the sash around his waist. He dressed him in the robe, placed the ephod on him, and attached the ephod securely with its decorative sash. Then Moses placed the chest piece on Aaron and put the Urim and the Thummim inside it. He placed the turban on Aaron's head and attached the gold medallion, the badge of holiness, to the front of the turban, just as the Lord had commanded him. Then Moses took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and everything in it, making them holy. He sprinkled the oil on the altar seven times, anointing it and all its utensils, as well as the wash basin and its stand, making them holy. Then he poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head, anointing him and making him holy for his work. Next, Moses presented Aaron's sons. He clothed them in their tunics, tied their sashes around them, and put their special head coverings on them, just as the Lord had commanded him. Then Moses presented the bull for the sin offering. Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the bull's head, and Moses slaughtered it. Moses took some of the blood, and with his finger, he put it on the four horns of the altar to purify it. He poured out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. Through this process, he made the altar holy by purifying it. Then Moses took all the fat around the internal organs, the long lobe of the liver, and the two kidneys, and the fat around them, and he burned it all on the altar. He took the rest of the bull, including its hide, meat, and dung, and burned it on a fire outside the camp, just as the Lord had commanded him. We will finish this chapter with this uh, ordination ceremony tomorrow. I want to point out one word out of the 17 verses that we just read, and that is the word holy. This word is often misconstrued. Um, when you hear the word holy, it gives a, a connotation of, of something uh, pious or something that is perfect. Or we say, oh, well, that person is just so holy. Like there's a, a an air about them or a, uh, like they wear a halo, you know, that they're, they're just, uh, they're, they're almost perfect. And that's a misinterpretation of the word holy. The word holy actually means to be set apart, to be called out by God and to be set apart for a specific purpose. And we see that throughout these 17 verses that Aaron and his sons were, were made holy by this ordination because they had been set apart by God. Even the altar was made holy and the different aspects of this ordination, things were made holy, that means that they were set apart for a specific purpose. Now we see in this that this is talking about Aaron and his sons, the priestly lineage of the children of Israel. And we talked yesterday about taking care of pastors and leaders and, and those that God has called um, into his service. What we need to understand, though, is that as a follower of Jesus Christ, we have all been made holy. 
not just in the fact that we stand before God in the righteousness of Jesus, but in the fact that God has called each and every one of us out to a specific job, a specific calling for the cause of Christ, for the gospel message. Each one of us has a calling. The question is, and the question for all of us to answer is, have we accepted that call? And what will we do? Literally, what will we be willing to give up to fulfill the calling on our lives? Will we, will we say completely and totally yes to God? And will we put aside all of our desires and all of our wants for the cause of Christ? That's what he's asked us to do. That's what Jesus did for us. And that's what he expects us to do as his followers. So as we conclude this time, and as we prepare to worship today on this Pentecost Sunday, the day that we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit on the disciples and in, into the world and to all believers, may we all say yes to the call. Yes to what Jesus has placed on our lives. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you that you have placed a call on each one of our lives. Now I pray, Lord, that each one of us will say yes to that call and we will do our best through the power of the Holy Spirit, which we celebrate today on this day of Pentecost to do what you have called us to do, to be set apart, to be made holy for the gospel message. We thank you that we have the honor of serving you in this regard, and we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As I mentioned, today is Pentecost Sunday, so we look forward to seeing you in worship at West Shore today. We'll be continuing our series, Hazardous Prayers, and we'll be looking at some of these prayers that are kind of scary when we actually pray them and we hear from God. So join us if you can. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace. And may you fall just a little bit deeper in love with Jesus today. Take care. May God bless you.